And before we get into this scene, I just want to point out, like, right at the very beginning, there's this weird speed zoom that screams of, oh, shit, that's not the right button. <laughs> it really is. It's so clearly that moment in the home movies where your aunt was like, say hi, Grandpa. Oh, God. Um, how, do I, how do I get? There he is. There he is. We'll watch this when you're dead. <laughs> when you're dead. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because nothing else we've tried has quieted the lambs. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath. Then right, Heath, welcome back, sir. Best movie ever. This oh. is, I, I came nine times. <laughs> my sex life has peaked. <laughs> peaked. And, and sitting I won't do that 81 anymore. miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? The best movie ever! <laughs> my Eli life agrees. has peaked. Not my sex life. <laughs> my existence has peaked. I consider just killing myself on video and submitting that as the Gamcast. Like, hey guys, just watch the movie. You'll never need me again. Pow! Happy Thanksgiving. Oh. It was so fucking amazing. I, I, it can never be this good again. So tell us, Heath, <laughs> what are we so excited about? What will we be breaking down today? We watched Blood Freak. It's fantastic. It's a cautionary tale about <laughs> marijuana addiction, GMO turkey meat, and the thing that happens when you combine them. I don't want to spoil it right now. <laughs> I'm going to spoil it right now. But I also don't want to forget to mention it later. So I'm going to take a sticky note. Don't forget to talk about what happens when you combine bad pot and GMO turkey. All right. You guys try to remember, too. We'll yeah, get to it. No, I'm we'll sure. Hopefully it'll come up at some point. And Eli, how amazing was this movie? Well, if you love blowjobs, but you also love it when your existence peaks and you've conquered all your enemies <laughs> and your lineage is secure and you're happy and bright and the greatest piece of art ever created has passed before your eyes and you get to share it with the world, you will love this movie. <laughs> this, this movie makes international gorillas look like Spotlight. This makes vultures of horror look like the Babadook. This is the craziest, most one everything about If this were purposeful, this would be the most brilliant comedy of yes. all time. This yes. would be the, uh, the highest level of human genius ever created. But it is just the single most terrible thing that the planet Earth has ever created. And there is not a second of it. That's not enjoyable. Not a oh, single no. second of this movie. It's on YouTube. You absolutely must watch it. You, I, I look, we, this is coming out after Thanksgiving. You had a bad Thanksgiving and you earned it. Remember, <laughs> you didn't punch Uncle Larry in the face. All right. You did punch Uncle Larry in the face. Good for you. <laughs> Fuck Either him. way. Right. Either way, you deserve this movie. It's on YouTube. Look up. Watch the oh. movie. Yeah, like, okay, so here's the thing. Like, we do bad movies every week. And, like, last week we did a bad movie that was just a boring, fucking stupid movie. But, like, if you love bad movies, you will watch this and wonder where it has been all your life. Like, this is the bad movie that is the reason why you love to watch bad movies. Um, So I, I feel like we've already summed this up. But in terms of simple film craft, is this the worst movie we've ever watched? Uh, yes, and it does not matter. It was fantastic <laughs> despite that. Yeah, the, the lighting is the worst we've ever seen. There are scenes entirely in darkness. The sound is the worst we've ever seen. There are scenes that are entirely inaudible. The special effects are the worst. It is the yep. fakest. The guy, Estes Perkle, would have been like, I have some notes on the fake blood y'all use. <laughs> it is the worst at literally everything. It has the craziest looking actors. This makes Stephen Baldwin look like Da Vinci's example of man. There is nothing about this movie that is not the peak of crazy that we have experienced. Now, here's the wonderful thing. So 
the only copy of this that we were able to find to do this review was a pared down version on YouTube. And apparently they cut out some of the best parts. So live your life knowing that there is even more blood freak out there somewhere in the world. So like if you've seen this movie like on DVD or whatever and we leave out like amazing scenes like people getting their legs chopped off with table saws and stuff. That's why because they had to take that out to get it onto YouTube. So we haven't seen the full blood freak. We've seen the YouTube like pared down blood freak. And yes, by the way, this is a Christian movie. Yeah, it is absolutely, <laughs> really and this is. is something important to remember, because, like, I was watching this movie, and I was like, oh, man, this is so terrible, what fun, what fun, but I'm worried that this won't be a Christian movie. This is absolutely, 100%, also a Christian movie, an X-rated Christian yes. movie, but it is but- as clearly a Christian movie as any other film we've watched, and more so than some of Kirk Cameron's movies. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right, so is there anything that you guys wanted to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, best, best movie. I think you meant best at being the best at, <laughs> and it was the best, best movie. Uh, can I go with best, best turkey on woman sex scene? <laughs> All right, well, we have, for, for our Patreon listeners, they, they'll, they'll know we have seen two of those. Yep, yep. Yeah, and, that's and, and this that was definitely realized. the best one. And we haven't even done Howard the Duck yet. <laughs> Very similar. All right, I'm going to go with uh, Best Worst Lighting. Eli already uh, alluded to this, but there is literally a point in this film where we are essentially watching a black screen for five minutes while we're treated <laughs> to a radio play unintentionally. Yeah, with, Like, this isn't, like, a, a, an artistic decision that the director made. With be- Also, I want to go with Best Worst Narration. The narrator in this movie, <laughs> look, I could spend the rest of this episode just talking about the narrator. Oh, Just yeah. <laughs> talking about what led to casting him, who he is, how he was involved with the production. I have so many questions. My crazy billionaire remake of this movie is A, make it 10 times longer because it's the greatest <laughs> thing that ever happened. And B, I just want to find the people who made it and ask them what the fuck was going on. <laughs> No shit. And I can't remember who it was who recommended this, but this was a listener recommendation. And we said, you know what, we're going to save this one for Thanksgiving. It looks way too amazing. Uh, so we've been looking forward to breaking this one down for an exceedingly long time. So that means we're going to keep the break brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into the first and probably last X-rated Christian movie we will ever review, Blood Freak. Time. It occurs every day. Every minute of every day, if you look for it, you won't see it, unless you're looking at a clock, or something that happens relatively quickly but can't unhappen. But if you sniff, you won't smell it, no matter what you're looking at. You also can't hear it, or touch it, or the other one. What's the uh, taste? You can't taste it either. But it is upon this untouchable, untastable, unsmellable time that the shattered dreams of our inner souls cry out from the barren plains of stale metaphors and beckon us to hearken their warning. And it is in these whimpering voices that we find our catalyst to push forward. What is a catalyst? It's the smartest-looking word I saw when I looked up motivation in the thesaurus, except for impetus, and I'm not really sure how to pronounce that one. And all of the words I just said mean something, as do these next ones. We interrupt this skit to bring you breaking news. Dateline Chicago. The god-awful movie's crew has just announced a collaboration that threatens the very future of good taste and human decency. According to unnamed sources within the Puzzle in a Thunderstorm operation, Eli, Heath, and Noah will be teaming up with Tom and Cecil from Cognitive Dissonance for a live recording of god-awful movies on Friday, January 13th at the beautiful Victory Gardens Biograph Theater in the non-murdery part of Chicago. Tickets for this event are already on sale and are selling fast. Multiple early reports indicate that you can find a link to buy tickets Tickets on the God Awful Movies Facebook page or by following the link on the show notes for this episode. Further bulletins as events warrant. And now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. The depths of the bowels of the souls of the reason we reached for it in the first place. And it is only by embracing this desire that we can find it within ourselves to look inside of ourselves and reflect upon our inner selves. Moreover... We interrupt this skit again to bring you different breaking news. 
Dateline the Internet. According to a recent email exchange, I'll be appearing on the Dogma Debate 24-hour broadcast-a-thon this coming Saturday in a community-wide effort to help raise money for Camp Quest. According to sources close to the broadcast-a-thon, I'm currently the reigning fundraiser champion of the event and would very much appreciate your support during our hour. I'll be on at 10 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday, December 3rd, but if you can't donate during that hour, please donate anyway. Camp Quest is a great charity. But just don't give during Tom and Cecil's hour because we wouldn't want them getting big heads. You'll find links to watch the broadcast live on our social media pages or by going to dogmadebate.com on Saturday, December 3rd. And now, back to your regularly scheduled skit. From the very teeth of the vagina, only to watch it crumble to dust before you. And of course, the sum total of all of this pretentious verbosity has been an extremely discursive effort to find something profound sounding to say about a blood drinking man turkey. I've failed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to oil my mustache. And we're back for the breakdown, and apparently we're going to start the credits of this movie on the planet of Dagobah, interspersed with cuts of the food babe's nightmares. Yeah, M- my music <laughs> note here was, so you hit the piano and I'll ring this doorbell 100 times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and when you do, please hit that piano with a hammer. All right, so... We get these, you know, like kind of like slasher flick generic credits or whatever. And then we go straight to direct address from James Woods as a 70s porn director. We already mentioned this narrator. <laughs> I thought it was Fred Trump. I thought it might have been Fred <laughs> Trump. I didn't know he was into porn, but it looks uh, it's got to be it's got to be Trump's dad. He looks like the most interesting child molester in the world. The sides, <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen this yet, the sides of his hair are totally white, and the top of his hair is little boy brown. He's it's- drawn on, very clearly drawn on his mustache, and his robe and shirt look like they, he's wearing like a silk robe over a like a dirty old wife beater, and it looks like it comes from the Come Hither collection by Bill Cosby. <laughs> You know how some people describe like a, a dress as looking poured on? His shirt looks like poured on, except it was wax. You know, it was poured on, but lumpy also, in a gravy kind of way. There is no moment when this narrator will speak when he will not very clearly look down at his script in front of him. <laughs> yep. There is nothing more true in the universe that this guy was reading his lines while saying them. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and almost certainly had never seen them before. He would look down, read a line, look up at you and say it and kind of look down as he was saying it throughout. And also the first of all, audio note, the microphone and camera can be in separate places even back then. Um, <laughs> but also, can we talk about as silly as this guy looks, what he's saying is even sillier. So stupid. Yeah. Um, so he starts out with the changes, change, like changes yeah. take place every second of every minute of every hour. That's why I melted these clocks. I'm Salvador <laughs> Dali after a tang accident. He's speaking <laughs> vague nonsense phrases. It's so annoying. Oh, and then, he said, and then he throws out catalyst. For, for yeah, no yeah. Uh, it's just like catalyst. What is what? a catalyst? Uh, oh, you want to know about the smart person word I just used? <laughs> well, catalyst means, oh, I hate him. Yeah, and I feel, I, I wanted to tell him, I'm like, dude, you're the only one who had to look that up, right? The rest of us <laughs> yeah. already knew. Uh, and what's amazing is he goes, what does catalyst mean? Well, in this case, it's a person who brings about change. And it's like, but that's not what catalyst means, dude. <laughs> that means that you were like, oh, fuck, this dictionary is heavy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, in this case, the catalyst is Herschel. So, you know, <laughs> there you go. Or the girl. We're not really sure. But, yeah, and this is all just like this prolonged. And, and he's cl- very clearly taking this shit super serious. Oh, my God. Know? And the the extent to which he tries to take this entire story seriously, it, it cannot be overstated. But basically, he says nothing for five minutes, and he's like, and uh, so this, we're going to do this movie, and Herschel's the name of the guy. Yeah, I, yeah there's, there is no, <laughs> there is nothing more clear that this is the guy your mom fucked on her girl's trip to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that our main character's name is Herschel. Herschel. I never thought there would be a perfect protagonist name for a 
motorcycle riding Armenian Elvis impersonator. <laughs> but that's what we're going to cut to. We're going to cut to Herschel riding his motorcycle. And we're going to do it via a camera that is clearly being held by a man hanging out of the back of a car. <laughs> and he zoomed in. Right? Because like several seconds into this shot, he zooms out and we're like, oh, my God, dude. Don't yeah, you, no. Couldn't you go on wide from the start here before I vomited? I wrote, I wrote my notes. The camera appears to be being operated by Michael J. Fox. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Herschel right. looks like all white people looked before black people told us to cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like red velvet cake Elvis. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kind of like – I had him as Native American Elvis, but he took like – Face only steroids. His face <laughs> right? is enormous and bubbly. <laughs> it's crazy. And yeah, he, he's just like driving along, and then all of a sudden, oh look, there's like a, a porn star having car trouble next to that shaky camera crew. I'm gonna pull over. <laughs> yeah. Well, and even when it was a still shot, even when nobody was moving, it still seemed like the shot was like somehow out of a moving car. You know, it was the craziest. It's the craziest thing you can think of. Yeah, so so Herschel pulls over to help her out, and you really have to kind of intuit that because we don't see, and he doesn't change a tire for her or open her hood at any point or whatever. We just kind of get the impression, oh, they both pulled over. Uh, she's got a labia short skirt, and he took off his helmet and his head somehow got bigger. Um, so I bet they're going to fuck. <laughs> yeah, and then all of a sudden they're driving again. I mean, I'm yeah. assuming like he hit the engine with his enormous head like Fonzie and started back up, but like we don't see that. Wax it against the side. What a superfluous hey. helmet though, right? Like if that guy wiped out on his fucking motorcycle, he would just leave divots along the road with that head. No, of his. his face is made of helmet. He's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Helmets are based on Herschel's head, not the other <laughs> yeah, camera. Right. Oh, uh, and also and, in this shot of them driving, I mean this movie's from 1972, so I had this great moment of nostalgia where I was like, God, remember when cars were just horrible rectangles made out of smoke um, right? <laughs> everyone's just driving a tissue box around pouring that <laughs> oil onto a baby seal <laughs> yeah drink it all seven... daddy -o. <laughs> absolutely 70s were amazing and we get a little bit more of that the toll taker that they drive yeah. through here he's wearing a full suit Full, like nine piece suit. He's got a carnation. He's smoking a cigar inside the little toll. He's eating Crisco with a spoon. He's got thalidomide martini. It's crazy. And by the way, I think we should point out that in just this shot of two people meet side of the road and drive off together, we actually watched them pay a toll. <laughs> right. Like that's how yep. little the director understood of what we need to see. And also they ran out of music well before they ran out of scene. So the scene keeps going for several seconds in silence. But that's the, how the, bad it is. The music here is incredible. My music note was thrills, chills, cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> So now we get uh, Herschel and this woman that he's met. Uh, they're, they're they're going to her house apparently, which is filled with middle aged hippies smoking drugs. Mm -hmm. But also, um, also Mary Tyler Moore. I'm pretty <laughs> sure the the entire decade of women are all Mary Tyler Moore in my head. Yeah, right. right. And all the That's men fair. are Burt Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. My first note here is nice boobs, but I like her hair boobs better because everyone's just got these weird hair tits on either shoulder <laughs> staring at you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so what we're going to learn in this scene is that this this girl that he meets, wait, what was her name? Was this Anne? Angel. Angel. That's right. That's right. Anne, Anne was the sister. Okay, so so Angel is not into drugs, but lives in a house with 75 people doing drugs at any given moment. And the extra from Franken chips that she brought home does not do drugs, and neither does she. Oh, right. by the way, this is where I realized he, Herschel, he's literally... T-Hawk from Street Fighter. If you, oh if you know God. Street Fighter 2 with the extra fighter, the super Street Fighter 2, uh -huh. he's dressed like he is T-Hawk, the Native American guy from Street Fighter 2. <laughs> oh, that's great. See, I had him in this scene as Hugh Jackman drank essence of Armenian. <laughs> <laughs> I had him as Neanderthal Eric Estrada. And I mean, if you know, because like Eric Estrada is Neanderthal Eric Estrada. So <laughs> that's 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 
quite a ways up the chain or down the chain, I guess, evolutionarily speaking. So anyway, so he's standing there talking about how he doesn't smoke weed or do drugs and the uh, and the angel sister who is a different race than angel shows up and tries to offer him weed and angel goes all Jesus on her. Yeah. The, the, the actual quote is, you know, your body's a temple of the Holy Spirit and you shouldn't defile it, right? Yeah. But meanwhile, everyone in 1972 had visible melanoma, like poking out of their skin. <laughs> so your body's whatever. You're at a drug party. Well, when she wrote that line, I wrote in my notes, geez, I would like to apologize to the Holy Spirit just in case. I mean, I don't believe in God or the Holy Spirit, but I am sorry. <laughs> Holy Spirit gets back up to heaven. No, fuck you guys. I am not going back down there. You know what he, would eat? he would wake up to eat. He would wake up. I saw him not even melt a block of Velveeta. He just put it on chips and called it nachos. He just put it on. No, fuck you. Get off me, Michael. I'm not going back down there because there could be another one. <laughs> there could be another one. So a Angel wanders off in the back to change. And when she does... Uh, Herschel sits down and all the druggies gather around to offer him hand jobs and drugs. Yeah. Uh, nope. and th this is, yeah, the, this is where he gets propositioned by Dame Judy Dench at 19. <laughs> <laughs> she basically comes over and she's like, Hey, do you, you want to have sex? And he's like, you're a whore. And she's like, that's a mean thing to say, even if you're Christian. And he's like, I look like Frankenberry. <laughs> <laughs> Right. But then uh, I had her again as trampy Mary Tyler Moore. She she goes to complain about this to Burt Reynolds, her boyfriend or something. Yeah. And he's uh -huh. like, oh, oh, the the dude called you a tramp, but you are a tramp. He totally right? does. He goes, what you, but isn't that factually accurate? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'll kick his ass. And she's like, it's that guy. He's like, I'm not going to kick his ass. I got a different idea now. Uh, looks like genetics already did the job for me. So <laughs> I'm going to stay here. Yeah. And also, by the way, a uh, small thing, Burt Reynolds is holding an enormous glass Sherlock pipe. Yeah, what the hell? Like, huge. Like, like he's about to give a speech about Jewish people being like rats. It's crazy. <laughs> it makes no... Like, were they doing crack? Was crack a thing in 1972? I don't think so. I don't so. think it was. It, it, it's hard to imagine, though, that this movie was a thing without crack being a thing. It's it's hard to imagine <laughs> that this came before crack. 1972, um, Noah's in his early 30s. So, I think <laughs> <laughs> So then we cut to the same scene. No time has elapsed. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. And they decide to talk about the Bible together. Now, there's a, a girl in this scene who is – she's clearly talking. There's clearly sound emanating from her mouth, but not in a level that is audible to the human ear. Yeah. She, she's asking <laughs> something about the Bible, and the girl who is properly mic'd is answering her. And there's also a guy sitting there who, who like, doesn't matter to the scene or the movie, but he looks like David Spade played minor league baseball. <laughs> and he is – his physical appearance is so distracting. There is nothing. Jennifer Lawrence could be slowly inserting an all-American in herself in the same room as this man's face. And I'd be like, I'm so sorry, Jen. What were you thinking? <laughs> there was no point in fashion where everyone was like, hey, that looks great. No. You should continue oh. to look that way as a human being. <laughs> this, this guy was rough, yeah. I'm pretty sure I got AIDS from looking at his mustache and thigh drinks. <laughs> I might be HIV positive from that. It's not funny. That's not where you got it. That's funny to me. From that black guy. <laughs> Dude. So, yeah, so they're all get hanging out, getting high, and intently listening to Bible verses. Well, that's the thing. They're all, like, listening very intently. But, again, they're all drinking, doing blow. Like, she could be reading Mein Kampf, and they'd all nod along happily to this. <laughs> like, yeah, right, that's totally. Groovy, Jews are terrible. Man. Jews are terrible. <laughs> my, my cheek tastes really good. <laughs> this is fun. So, once again... We cut to the same scene and no time has elapsed. Now, I, I, I want to point out this is clearly a cut. There are establishing shots and everything, but we're just in the same place on the same evening at essentially the same time. Because the people who made this movie were so fucking high, they forgot <laughs> 
that they had made the scenes previous. <laughs> <laughs> that would explain an awful lot. So, yeah, so they're, they're continuing with their Jesus discussion. He's asking about the nature of sin, and at the same time, there's a girl behind him, like, picking <laughs> fleas out of his hair like a monkey. So weird. It looks like she's about to, like, remove a tick from Herschel's head with tweezers all of a sudden. <laughs> I don't it's get insane. I, I mean, I, I feel like, like, the, her instruction was, all right, now we, you, you're just, like, all over him like an animal. And she's like, okay, animals sometimes do this. I, I, I don't know what the hell was going on and there. And the guy was like, I have 700 milligrams of acid in my blood. That'll do just fine. <laughs> all <laughs> right, yeah. Me, I have to go talk to the dead. Uh, also, um, another small thing, but, um, I feel like the shape of the female breast used to be pointier. Is that a thing? <laughs> Did they evolve since 1972? The breasts are a different altogether shape. They're like yeah. little traffic cones. Yeah, something. yeah, conical is, was the word that was in my head. Yeah, there was definitely a conical boob back then. Uh, the conical boob. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I, I don't know what the fuck was going on because I couldn't I, – again, you can only understand some of the people some of the time in this movie. But at one point, um, he's lecturing Angel about adultery or whatever, and she says, the Lord says we commit adultery with sticks and stones. And I, just, I don't remember that part. I feel like if that had ever happened in the Bible, that would have really stood out in my mind. <laughs> Mm, well, uh, I have several videos on Xtube of me committing adultery with sticks and stones. Well, I it's know just that. Me by myself. Um, it's sort of a Rube Goldberg machine. Here's what I want you to picture. All right? I want you to picture the most terrifying mini golf course, but I am playing in the hole at the same time. So, How did you use the windmill? That's what I'm curious about. You Happy don't want to know that... Uh, there, there are just some questions you just don't ask. Yeah. So, all right. So, like, uh, she starts reading the Bible to him for a really long time. So he decides to follow her uh, back to her bedroom instead of fucking the much hotter chicks that seem to want to fuck him. But along the way, her sister Anne just shows up to be all trampy and say, "Hey, can I fuck him first? You wanna, you wanna put that Bible inside of me instead of reading it? And no, <laughs> T Hawk want read. Yeah." <laughs> Right. And she turns to her sister and she's like, you're such an asshole. Like, you ruin everything. And she goes, hey, I don't condemn you or your friends. I just want you to know you're broken and terrible and going to hell. Right. right. Bye. <laughs> so Anne, the, the, the sister, goes to porn stash for some drugs because she's afraid that Angel will Bibleize Herschel before she can fuck him and wants to preempt that with drugs that's the plot yep that's the point that yeah exactly that's where we land but luckily porn stash has magical joints laced with addiction powder mm. and he was basically like hey you want me to slip your sister something and she's like no no do that to herschel let's do that to herschel yeah right <laughs> Also, and then, like, he gives her some, like, some weed or something, and, and she, th this is the most bizarre question. She says, it won't hurt me, will it? But I gotta say, this girl saying, it won't hurt me, will it, is the most turned on I have ever been by one of these movies <laughs> that we've ever done. Now, th that's a very temporary record. My It'll screen is protected. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, that record is only going to last for about three more scenes. I'll point it out when it's broken. Um, but now we cut back to the wood panel narration from the guy who's going to make you a star, baby. Um, yeah, and he's, he's giving a lesson about being healthy while literally smoking a cigarette. Yeah, okay, we, we didn't mention that earlier. This guy is never not sucking on a cigarette like he's trying a too thick milkshake. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, seriously, he's like... Some people go through their whole lives without thinking about the things, lights a cigarette, that could influence their destiny. <laughs> right? That's exactly what's happening. <laughs> and basically his monologue here is, look, Herschel's just met two beautiful girls. One is great, the other's a whore. <laughs> Herschel was in Vietnam. <laughs> Bye-bye. Well, at a certain point, too, he like he starts, like, you know, almost... He, he gets a little homoerotic about Herschel. You know, he's like, he's strong, he's handsome, and he enjoys being attractive. To the opposite sex. to Because a uh, girl would think that. W women like would think that, not this me. This is a Christian movie. I yeah. can't stand up. I, I know it says in the scene directions I'm supposed to stand up, but I can't. I, 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 my chair is stuck. <laughs> 
And then, yeah, basically he says, and this next scene is going to be even worse than Vietnam. And I, for one, believe him. Yeah. Uh, so was there a Street Fighter character from Vietnam? I don't think there was. <laughs> uh, and also, really quick during this scene, they cut back to a different part of the movie for half a uh, yeah. second. Like, was that Tyler Durden? Were they trying to make some clip? I, I have no. They keep doing this. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much of that is actually the movie, and how much of that is the edit that the dude. It did to it to get it to YouTube, but it makes it way more amazing. <laughs> it, does, it, it definitely like this is one of those movies where when scenes randomly start or restart or whatever, it makes the movie better. So there are several times throughout this movie as you watch it on YouTube that you'll get anywhere from one to four seconds of the next scene before you go back in time to the beginning <laughs> of the scene. <laughs> yeah. So. So now we're back to the same old folks drug party that we've been at the entire time where Herschel meets an old feller that'll give him a job. Oh, yeah. yeah Estes Perkle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, Pretty and much. Are they in the same party? Because it feels like I, they're in a Bible study group. It might be in a different wing of the drug party. I have it's, no the fucking 70s idea. were cool. <laughs> yeah. and, and he literally says to him, oh... Because he's like, man, I could use a job. And he goes, I could use a husky man like you at my poultry ranch. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I wanted him so badly to be like, you know, random work, get sweaty, sleep in fresh straw with your shirt off, see how things go. <laughs> the fact that this guy didn't fuck Herschel is the least realistic thing that happened in this movie. Again, there are a few missing minutes that we didn't see, so I just want to throw that out. We don't know for sure that he didn't. Stop yeah. apologizing for blood freak. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like the, there, there's a very clear undercurrent of this man is going to fuck him for money that never really pays off. And then Angel says he can stay with her until he gets on his feet. And then we go to the first scene. Like we joke around all the time about beating off to this scene or that. This one I beat off to. This is the bikini shot. Uh, scene with the sister where she's oh, trying to get Herschel to fuck her again. This is well, fantastic. Wait. Now, I was super turned on by how attractive this girl was, but I was entirely distracted by the fact that she walks over. He's cleaning the pool or installing a railing or something. She walks over with what appears to be a tatami mat, and she places it halfway into the pool and sits <laughs> on it. What? Noah, what is that thing? <laughs> Is that what towels were? I t <laughs> <laughs> what is so that? Weird. Does anyone know what that is? Seriously, because that is what I spent this entire time. She's like, hey, Herschel, look at this. Oh, I can fit an entire traffic cone down my throat. And I was like, what are you sitting on? Is that a pool toy? What is that? I honestly spent the entire scene wondering just how much Bush was hiding under that bikini. This was oh. 1972. Yeah. Right, so she's she's clearly seducing Herschel with the t Tommy floating half towel thing, but and she's like, "Yeah, thanks for fixing the pool. Can I get you a cold glass of my vagina?" And <laughs> do you all prefer lemonade? So like, no. And then she takes a joint out of a band aid box mm -hmm. and um, finally gets him to smoke. By uh, at first he says no, and then she's like, "What's wrong? You you afraid to smoke chicken?" And he freaks out and smokes for spite, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And let, let's just explain here. The, we convince the main character to do drugs the way you convince Heath to jump off a roof. This is <laughs> – she, she's like, oh, I guess you're a coward. If you, And he's like, fuck you. I'll smoke this crack right now. Hit me with heroin right in my fucking throat. I don't care. Yeah. He might as well pull out gloves and slap her on either cheek and then smoke the joint in her face. I'll smoke this pot and shoot you with a gun <laughs> right now. So they start smoking weed together and her, she's like giving him instructions and her instructions are deep, deep, hold it. Don't let it out. That is now the most turned on <laughs> I have ever been by one of these movies. But it yeah. just keeps going. It just keeps going. You're Forever. Like long enough for me to climax. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. He's learning to smoke like a middle school kid. I, like, I, I'm pretty sure I saw this clip in a dare class. This is very similar to a movie. I and saw he in dare has class. taught a tremendous amount of middle schoolers how to smoke drugs. <laughs> If you'd like Heath to teach your child, oh, we should teach Andrew's kid how to do drugs. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah! <laughs>
That's what we'll do when he comes to visit. There's <laughs> a reason he's staying in Baltimore. I'm just saying. There's a reason why he keeps burning our invitations. So now Herschel cackles maniacally like you do on the weed. <laughs> it's like they're about to start dancing like flappers. It's like Reaper <laughs> Madness reaction to this pot. Which 70, 1972 pot, which is nothing. It's See, grass. Uh, yeah, I thought they had captured Batman, so I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> and now she drags him into the bedroom for a scene that was certainly longer in the original film. This is the slow motion boob promising shot where the two of them consummate their relationship. And I love to like, OK, so we spent the first third of this movie or so saying like, yeah, Herschel's way too good a guy to just fuck any chick that uh, wants to fuck him. And uh, that, well, no, not really, though, if you think about it. And my notes here are just me begging the movie for a sex scene. It's just like, come on, sex scene, <laughs> boobs, boobs. Side boob? No, don't. No blackout. Boobs. Come back, boobs. Boobs. I had very similar notes. Very similar notes. Side All boob? of us Side have boob? similar Side boob? Notes. Almost? There it was. Yes. Yeah, we got 0. 0.4 seconds of nipple in there, and there was an ass shot in the next scene. So, yeah. 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 But before we can get to the ass shot, we have to go back to Monty the child molester. And his message, the narrator at this point, comes on to basically say... I mean, you'd have to be some kind of girly man not to fuck that chick, am I right? Yeah, right? Do right. you want to fuck her too? And he closes this. This is so weird. But he closes this by just going, like, apropos of nothing, just right on. <laughs> it's, like, it's the 70s. But, like, <clears throat> right on. I yeah. said right on. <laughs> right, I coughed exactly. during my, oh my cigarette God, anti-speech. <laughs> Oh, the coughs culminate in something. Like, the, literally the loudest I've ever laughed at one of these movies is, is at the very end of this movie. I'm just teasing you for the end here. It was so good. Um, and now we get that promised ass shot as they're uh, getting dressed the next day. And he's mad. Herschel's mad because she didn't wake him up for his first day at the new poultry job. <laughs> and it's so weird. He's like, when a man loses his virginity to a crack whore, he expects a hot breakfast and for her to set the goddamn alarm. Like, his outrage is crazy. Seemed like a bit of a bitchy move. Yeah. yeah. Warning, Anne, this is going to be a hostile relationship. Now we cut to him driving his motorcycle to his first day of work at the poultry farm. And my music note here is Noah's taking the brown acid anyway, because fuck you. <laughs> Now, I want to say from this point on in the movie, about 90 percent of the film will have background gobbling. <laughs> <laughs> ominous. It, it tempts yeah, right. yes. ominous. <laughs> That's what they're going for. Yeah. Also, there are so many brilliant moments just in this scene. Him just trying to open the fence is an entire Buster Keaton movie. Just like a good push. Okay, pull, pull, <laughs> so push to the side, other side. I can face through solid objects? No. no. <laughs> and, and, and when he finally makes it through, there's this moment where he's like having a stare down with what? the turkey. And I wrote in my notes, you know, I didn't think that a European biker looking menacingly at a turkey would be the funniest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah, we <laughs> we get like another... About five minutes of this stared at. He's looking at the turkey like Gregor Samsa looking in the mirror. Like he's very <laughs> confused and he's mimicking the head motions, tilting him at. Yeah, yeah, gobbling at him as though he might unlock turkey language. And this goes on for so long, I'm just like, man, I should be writing notes. That's my job. So I'm going like, you know, in retrospect, these guys look nothing like my hand. Um <laughs> so, Yeah, we spend a lot of time with him staring at turkeys. And then we meet Lenny and Eugene, and I fucking love Lenny. They, they look like Tom and Cecil if they had done nothing but live-action role-playing since puberty. But these are the two <laughs> scientists that work for the old guy at the poultry factory. Uh, I have John Belushi, who got too fat for his sign burns, and daytime <laughs> television makeover Ken Ham. <laughs> Like, Pretty get good. on out here, Ken. Wow, look at that tan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so the, guy, the the old guy that hired him walks him in, and he's like, I'd like to l- introduce you to Lenny and Eugene, and they're in the science room, and it is so, like, I'm surprised nothing in this room is marked Science Tron 2000. They obviously <laughs> went to the buddy who worked at the high school and said, can you bring us some of them beakers and shit? And he did. So they tell Herschel that, you know, he can make extra money at the poultry factory if he wants to help with experiments. And just on a personal note, Never trust a fat man who offers you money to help with experiments. Yeah, I said I was sorry. Ugh, not really loud <laughs> enough. We're not doing this on the air. <laughs> well, at this point, yeah, you're very clearly about to get inserted into a turkey human centipede. And it's not, <laughs> you should leave. And you're well, not, 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 not get necessarily. To be if you don't want that to happen, you should leave. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but, but what it really is is that they need a test human to eat their GMO turkey, because apparently that's how it works. The FDA won't sign off of, on it until you have one random person <laughs> with no knowledge of what his like health history is or whatever eat a whole turkey and not die, and then and then they'll approve it. That's how the FDA works in this universe. Yeah. And and Herschel's like, okay, uh, well, how much gravy do I get? And they're like, playing hardball, I see. Okay, fine, fine. Lots of gravy. Deal. And he, <laughs> that's how he decides to eat poison turkey meat as his extra Well, job. and they even tell him, they're like, well, you've, I'm, I, just to look at you, I can tell you you've done drugs way worse than Franken turkeys, so it wouldn't be anything for you. So basically they're like, are you a coward? And he's like, I'll eat that fucking turkey. <laughs> I'll, eat that tur- I'll eat that entire turkey a couple of scenes from now, literally. <laughs> he <every> will. <laughs> Because I'm crazy. This whole movie's a fucking insane creation <laughs> of a part of the world gone mad. There was a time period where we all just sort of lost our shit. It was bad. You can and tell this, by the hairdos and the clothes. And this movie captured it. <laughs> and you can tell so clearly that, like, Food Babe thinks this is a Monsanto training film. Like, it's just <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> You know, she the first time she saw this movie, she played it for whatever yoga instructor she was fucking and was like, see, see, (laughs) it will turn you into a blood drinking turkey. So now it's time for him to do his turkey work, which is apparently wrestling turkeys when they get out of line. Yeah. Is he a bouncer at a turkey bar? No. That seems what he's doing, yeah. And he's also collecting turkey eggs. Yeah, I guess we all are. It's weird the way he's doing it. Like, he's shaking them like he's been given wrapped eggs as a birthday present, and he's trying to figure out <laughs> what noise was going to give you information. I don't know. He's just like, hey, kill that little turkey. I don't, <laughs> right. I never shake a baby turkey. I should point out, this is the point at which the turkey sounds in this film become tiresome. Like, if you watch these movies along with us, you should know that it's about this point you'll be like, all right, that's enough. That's <laughs> enough turkey sounds <laughs> now. <laughs> so, but then midway through his day at the turkey factory, things get all slow motion and blotchy. <laughs> so he heads home where he can have marijuana DTs. He is jonesing for weed. <laughs> marijuana, not even once. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he's like literally laying on the floor shaking because he hasn't gotten enough weed. And Anne wanders in. She's very worried about him, so she calls someone, and the someone is a drug dealer. I love Anne. You yeah. know, like if, if my wife ever fucking comes in and I'm shaking on the ground, she's like, drug dealer first, and then we'll see about a hospital if he still thinks, uh, yeah, no. C- call me in. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine with 70s Bush. Anyway, so, and I also wrote my notes like, wow, that scene was so good. I'll, Watch it again, apparently. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you guys going to keep that? You're just an editor. You don't get art, do you? We are keeping that. It's mise-en-scene. Double mise-en-scene. Yeah, double. <laughs> you know, doub- it's double mise-en-scene. Maybe you don't know French. We're very artistic. There's no way that the people who made this movie could formulate that thought. Um, so, yeah, so she brings him some weed so he can stop rolling around on the floor and stuff. My music note here, by the way, is menu screen. <laughs> yeah, I, I, he's he brings him the drugs and then he's like, yeah, man, don't worry about it. This one's free. And then Herschel, like, grabs him and throws him on the bed. And I wrote, oh, Herschel's going to fuck this guy now. I love this movie. <laughs> Yeah. But it's even weirder than that, because what he is going to say to this guy is, hey, if you don't give me free drugs forever, I'm going to murder you. 
I'm going to do a 360 with my uh, button pad and press fierce if you don't keep giving me pot. <laughs> and as you well know, that's very similar to Zangief's spinning pile driver. <laughs> and it's the hard, it's the, you know, most powerful move in the game. So don't worry about it. You'll see. Yeah, don't give me Herschel, pot. Herschel is to weed as Heath is to ramen. You, know, you just, just got to keep him supplied or bad things happen. <laughs> And now it's back to the turkey farm so he can eat his radioactive turkey. And before we get into this scene, I just want to point out, like, right at the very beginning, there's this weird speed zoom that screams of, oh, shit, that's not the right button. <laughs> it really is. It's so clearly that moment in the home movies where your aunt was like, say hi, Grandpa. Oh, God. Um, how, do I, how do I get? There he is. There he is. We'll watch this when you're dead. <laughs> when you're dead. And there's also, so he brings him Ken Ham, daytime makeover Ken Ham brings him an entire turkey. A whole <laughs> uncarved roast turkey. Yep. Which we are about to watch him eat. Uh, to 1960s psychedelia music mixed in with turkey sounds. Oh, yes. And I wrote in my notes, if we cut to one of the turkeys playing a tiny electric guitar like Jimmy Hendrix, <laughs> I will kill myself because my life is over. It doesn't happen. No. But like that is the one thing I would add to this movie that I think could make it better. These guys must have spent weeks auditioning turkeys like a chorus line to get these noises. Yeah, that must be fun. But yeah, they give they give Herschel an entire turkey roast. And I really wanted him to call Westboro Baptist at this point. Oh, too, that was awesome. But he, instead, he's just like, he's smelling it. Like, does this smell like a GMO to you guys? Ah, fuck it. And he, eats the, he turns into Cookie Monster and just mom, 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 eats the whole thing. Yeah, yeah and with this scene, like all the scenes in this movie are like 11 and a half minutes long when they should be three. But in this scene, we go from him eating to the turkey to the turkeys angrily looking at him for eating them or whatever back to him and seeing that he's clearly not having a good time eating an entire turkey by himself in a single sitting with nothing to drink. <laughs> Unfucking real. The actor genuinely looked like kind of skeptical and then happy, though. He was like, <laughs> yeah. all right, all right. And he just started killing it. Yeah. <laughs> And then he gets up to leave after he's done, but nobody tells the cameraman. Yeah, I wrote my notes. Guys, he left the shot. Guys, <laughs> guys, it's over. Well, now it's just us and the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it literally it just lingers there for like 30 seconds. We can see in the reflection him walking away. Eventually, the scientist comes up to clean up the dishes. I guess that's what we were lingering there for. There be people would be like, but what happened to the dishes? <laughs> so we needed that scene. Two hippies sitting in a lawn chair somewhere. Wait, 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 man. What happened to the dishes, bro? We got to show that, daddy O. Otherwise, <laughs> our movie will be confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't want that. And then Herschel wanders off and passes out from the turkey poison, I guess. And then we cut to the scientist, to Ken Ham again. And he's supposed to just wander up and, and happen upon uh, uh, Herschel. But it takes him about two and a half minutes, yeah. right? Like, we just watch this guy. Like, he's re he literally stops, makes some notes on his pad, keeps going. He's reading this thing forever. Yeah, what is he reading for that long? I just wanted to zoom in on the clipboard. It just says, like, poison turkey, feed to Croatian drifter. <laughs> Wait, does he have an oversized head? Yes. Yeah, puts a little check for me. <laughs> Read this again five more times and then show him in a different scene. Yep. Yeah. So he stumbles upon Herschel and he's having a seizure in time with turkey noise. Yes. He's yep. literally, I wish this were a visual medium. You have to watch the movie because it's just blah, 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 and the guy shaking blah, 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 and the guy shaking. <laughs> it is the yes. most amazing thing you will ever see. Make it into a supercut. If you're ever feeling sad, look, Donald Trump's the president and he's about to appoint Count Chocula to be head of education. It's a fucking nightmare. But this movie exists and I can watch that scene anytime I want. So to me, it balances out. That's how <laughs> wonderful it is that's how great it is that's what i'm telling you i love too that at this point the scientist guy leans down and puts his head to herschel's chest like he's listening for a heartbeat the man is shaking about yeah he's breathing and moving yes why would you do that 
But that only goes from bad to worse because from there we immediately cut to the following scene where the boss now is mildly upset with them for drugging their new employee and then dumping his body in the woods. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, hey, guys, why did you dump him? And they're like, ah, he didn't seem like he was doing super well. And, <laughs> and he's like, do you think maybe the reaction to someone being at all ill is not to dump their body? And fucking fat John Belushi's like, yeah, I guess we were a little dump happy. <laughs> like, how sure were you that he was dead? Well, like, he, he said he wasn't. He He disagreed when we suggested it. <laughs> Oh, so you you dumped the alive. Let's call that Plan B for now. What about plan B? Uh, all right. What about? Uh, no, no. You're right. Had to dump him. Had to dump. But I'm not happy. Well, that's the whole fucking thing. Is that the boss delivers this like like like, like it's a reprimand for for an office that has a dump the body of a drugged employee jar that all of them have to put a dollar in now. <laughs> You know, he's so unperturbed by this. You take him across a few highways before you dumped him, like we said, like we always say. Highways. He goes over to a sign and has to bring set the days until we dumped a body back to zero. <laughs> no, I'm guys. <laughs> OSHA is no not going to be party. happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> so with that bizarre presaging of the bring out your dead scene over with we're going to pause to gather the strength it'll take to make it through the end of this thing but before we do let me give act three the hard sell here will the tainted turkey turn herschel into a blood drinking monster will that monster's head be a paper mache turkey will the narrator visibly contract cancer on camera yep this is not the kind of act three i really need to sell honestly so uh we're gonna take a break and come back we'll see you then Hey, baby, it's me, Herschel. I'm here to get groovy with Jesus. Tell me all about it. Oh, wow. Far out. I'm all about that, Daddy-o. It's me. I'm Horse Sister. Whoa. Chillax attack. She is my sister, Religious. I am a hole to be filled. Okay, see ya. Pick a hole. Seriously, pick a hole. All right, that was weird. Anyway, you were saying about Jesus... Oh yeah, uh, Jesus is the savior, dude, and uh, he he's gonna. It's like, me say, again. You want to play a uh, game? Uh, gravity. Uh, sis, can you? It's just, called Statue can, of Liberty. You put your hand as far not, up my. No, nope, not groovy. Not groovy. Sis, sis, we get it. You're you're free. Uh, can you leave me and Herschel alone for five minutes to talk about Jesus, please? There's a vase up my butt. Wait, uh, why did you guys dump the body? Oh, uh, sorry, boss. Y I mean, you, you should have seen him. He was shaking and quaking and making turkey noises. It was the worst. He was, yeah, boss. We was terrified. And, and, and then he died? Um, no, no, uh, wait, wait. we just dumped his body. Wait, you, you dumped his body? While he was still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but he was not doing doing well, so we figure Guys, that's not that's not dumping a body, that's dumping a, a human. Like a guy I mean what was he was breathing, right? Yeah. It did he did he have a pulse? Yeah, yeah. Then why on earth would you think dumping the body was the thing to do? Well, you know, <laughs> we would quick dump his body. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for more of this no-budget bullshit. We're going to start off with Sexy Sister, concerned about Herschel's whereabouts and his overall turkey monster status. Right. This girl has <laughs> known him for a, a day. They have had sex once, and she's like, it isn't like Herschel to stay out all night. It, like, how the hell would you know? Yeah. Who, it, also, her friends are like, eh, probably found drugs elsewhere. Have some drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we get that for like two seconds, but then we have to cut back over to Beavis and Butthead, the scientists that yeah. killed him. And they are hatching a scheme, hatching. It, well, by po it. post facto, <laughs> though, yeah, right, because they're like, you know, they're suddenly realizing this murdering people is tougher than it looks. So they're discussing like, well, do you think we should just leave? And they're like, mm, maybe we should just leave. And so they decide to. Now, yeah. I want to point out two things about this scene. First of all, 
you don't need to show us people deciding they should leave after murdering someone or thinking they murdered someone. That's just a kind of given. And number two, yeah. there will never be a point in the movie where they like, they come back to look for these scientists and discover that they've left. So it really doesn't matter <laughs> no, whatever they, happened to them. They just come back to this same thing happening for like another five seconds a little bit later, but nothing. Again, <laughs> yeah. it's, the same. it's yeah. the same. So yeah, Fat Ray Donovan, he's worried somebody's going to call the police. And the other scientist, what'd you... Ken Ham? Makeover yeah. Ken Ham. Make yeah. Ken Ham. He's like, well, we can't just leave town. And the guy's like, or can we? Oh, yeah. I like, never thought point. about We're it leaving. like that. We're leaving town. <laughs> We're leaving town. Cool. That's how that's decided. And now it's late at night and things are happening. But you can't tell what they are because they don't seem to know that cameras don't work in the dark. So basically, I am watching a black screen with three white pixels moving around in it. Like literally for the next six minutes in this movie, as I was watching it, I was looking at Eli's notes for clues as to what was going on. <laughs> right, yeah. One of my notes here is Anne wakes up in her waterbed to a giant turkey in her room. I'm asking because I can't see the movie. <laughs> Well, yes, that's what happens. Her show okay. turns into a turkey, and Anne's just chilling in her sweet ass waterbed. Her sweet ass. God, <laughs> the seventies were great. Remember when we were like, "Hey, what's a great thing to have in the home? How about a balloon full of water? Is it comfortable? <laughs> no. Is it good for your back? No. But I've always wanted to be motion sick as I fall asleep. <laughs> hey, waveless water beds are awesome. Don't knock everything about the seventies. When I was in my early forties, <laughs> you had a water bed. A waveless water bed. It was comfy as fuck. California king. It was huge. It was like wider than it was tall. It's amazing. I love that thing. So, and fuck both of you guys. You've never had sex on a waveless waterbed. That's why you're laughing. Anyway, so yeah, thanks for cluing me. And like literally my notes here are like something happened and someone screamed. I don't know why or who. Well, she screams at the sight of Herschel and then he hands her a piece of paper, which I think we're supposed to assume says like, hey, it's me, Herschel, not a turkey monster. And she's like, <laughs> oh, okay. But I wrote in my notes like, wait, is that turkey serving her a summons? To be fair, <laughs> that's an amazing way to serve someone a summons. And that um. is how, if I ever do that, I will serve someone. <laughs> Right, but she can't read his chicken scratch. Hey oh. Oh shit. Oh. But, uh, I, and I really wanted to see this note like sorry I snapped at you about the alarm clock. I'm a literal turkey now. Okay, bye. <laughs> the other four pages are just a grocery list. Like what why would he give her a note? I'm literally I I don't know what that I never saw this note. Like I was literally staring at a black screen, turning the bright up on my computer, going, How do you guys know what's going on? So I might have to just back away. I was playing the game um that we play when we try to figure out what Eli was doing while we were sampling room noise <laughs> for the rest of this fucking like five five minutes. It was like watching scrambled porn. You guys remember that? No, you guys don't. But some people remember that. People who remember sleeping in water beds are thinking to themselves, like, is that a leg? Which side is the vagina on though that's definitely a leg anyway yeah so herschel's been turned into a turkey and Anne seems upset but not like surprised right she, and and they're basically we cut to a scene of them like sharing a diary yeah a la, <laughs> a la i'm not ashamed like they're passing notes back and forth because he's a turkey now he can't talk duh uh but he still can write and read uh, so he's like, and then I woke up and I'm a Turk. She's reading his notes, which is like, and then I woke up a turkey, which unnecessary to write. You're very clearly a turkey. <laughs> Keep it yeah. brief. New information only. And we learn even though he's a turkey, he's still addicted to drugs. Yes. <laughs> the one thing, the one upside you would hope that would come from him being turned into a turkey. No, he's still jonesing. <laughs> And they have a dialogue here. Like you said, they really like talk to each other. Like she starts asking what she feels are pertinent questions. Yes. Here. Like, what if you stay like a turkey? Would we have a turkey life? Would our kids be turkeys or like half turkeys? Can, can we get a turkey mortgage? I feel like I'm going to have to handle all this stuff. And then hey, what about Thanksgiving? Are you going to be a dick about it? Is it going to be awkward? The parents are going to expect a turkey. Her focus is insane. Her well, her, okay, her, actual line. 
what would the children think of their father looking like that? (laughs) You are talking to a half man, half turkey. (laughs) I need you not to be focused on like, okay, but like, would you get the kids on weekends and I would take them during the weekday because it's the 70s. It's the nuttiest. It's the fucking craziest. And so to, to solve this, Herschel turns out the lights and fucks her. Turkey fucks her. <laughs> That's for real. And I love that. I was like, wow, this scene can get darker. <laughs> there is less light you could have entering into the camera there. But yeah, yeah. So he turkey fucks her. I really wanted him to peck a hole in the waterbed and then be like, <laughs> ow, oh, no, it's, it's flooding. The room's flooding. Are you kidding? This is a waveless waterbed, the peak of luxury. <laughs> Also, when we flood we the liner, it. it all stays in the liner. <laughs> he knows the safety feature. <laughs> so then we get lighting again. I, I was so I'm so shocked that the funniest thing about this movie is the fact that I used to own a water bed. <laughs> and you're doubling down so hard. <laughs> People are going to be like, guys, they're really working those ads in cleverly. i got to find out. They haven't given us the code yet, but I'm excited. I'll try. He knows this. It's fun. It's no Casper mattress, but it was awfully comfortable. Yeah, so so then we get lighting again so that Sexy Sis can call her sister for that old, hey, I fucked a turkey conversation. Uh, Family (laughs) drama. Thanksgiving, am I right? People at home get it. So, yeah, so, and now we've got to go back to the the man who holds the record for the most public masturbation arrests so he can narrate to us what was going on while the lights were out, I guess. (laughs) Well, not just that, but he's narrating over, like, the sister apparently comes and she's like, hey, man, now that you're a turkey, do you want to get super into Jesus? And the guy's (laughs) like, but Herschel was like, no. Turkey says (laughs) no to Jesus. (laughs) Turkey is reasonably concerned about focusing on religion right now rather than a cure for him turning into a turkey. And I want to point out, okay, this narrator clearly is selling this turkey monster splatter flick as though it is a message from God. Right? Like, like <laughs> yeah. I feel like we've underemphasized the extent to which this is a Christian movie. And, yeah, th- he's saying, like, we turn to God when the worst things happen in our lives. Like, getting fucked by a giant turkey. That's why, that's why the world needs God for situations yeah, like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Who will you turn to when a giant turkey fucks you, if not God? Yeah, yeah. And while, while he's still talking, we're clearly looking at a scene that was supposed to have words in it. And I feel like the, they just fucked up the audio and they're like, no, 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 just put it in with the narration. It'll work. Yeah. It'll work. Look, s- smoke some more of this and it'll work. And so now everybody shows up to tell Anne that they can't find Herschel. We need to talk about the set dressing here because this scene takes place in front of a painting of a tiger done on velvet. And mm-hmm. Noah, I wonder, <laughs> over your incredibly fantastic waterbed, did you have this painting of the tiger? <laughs> All right. I feel like so, the two go together really well. <laughs> you can see so, it in black light. I tiger, wa- his glacier bed. Yeah. yeah I want to <laughs> point out that – the okay in this one scene there is a tiger painting on the wall the girl is wearing leopard pants and there is a zebra striped couch (laughs) there are three clashing animals prints on screen at the same time and noah loves every minute of it it was amazing it was amazing you guys weren't doing the right drugs you need to lace your joints with addiction powder before you watch (laughs) movies like this there's a little seizing and turning into a turkey later but you'll be good you'll be good And I love to, okay, so this is the scene where she's like, no, guys, I found her show, but he's a giant turkey. And they're all like, yeah, I don't know if maybe that's, maybe that's the drugs talk. And she's like, it's like something straight out of the Twilight Zone. I'm like, don't flatter yourself, writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They ask her, she's, they're like, oh, you're, you're like on a bunch of drugs, right? You just told us that you, your, your boyfriend is, giant turkey head and then no i'm i'm super high on drugs like always that's true but he definitely has a giant turkey head look and they get to see him right. yeah and this is really the first time where we've gotten a i'm not gonna say a good look because they still keep him kind of in the shadows of what they've done to turkify him 
and it's simply a paper mache turkey head sitting on a dude. Yep. And they, they, they only let him get a couple inches into the light with it this time because they know. Because <laughs> Brian made it and they were like, so Brian, you had six months and $700,000. Let's see it. And he was like, fuck you. <laughs> Drove off in his new helicopter. And, and he, the best thing is he walks out in the turkey mask and the other characters are like, lame. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no one seems to react to this quite properly. So now we cut quickly to the turkey man stalking through the woods. And I wrote in my notes at this point, I can't tell if the order that the scenes are in is the order they were going for. And that's how bad the movie is. I just can't tell. (laughs) So I figured this out. I figured out what happened. I figured out what happened. Remember, he's still addicted to drugs. So he goes to Mm -hmm. the drug dealer's house for drugs but he can only get his fix through the blood of people who use drugs. So he peeks through the window of Burt Reynolds' house and he sees he and this groovy chick doing drugs and she does a bunch of drugs and then she leaves. So he kidnaps her because he's going to drink her blood for the Jones that he Joneses for. (laughs) And what's amazing (laughs) is when he picks her up, she like feverishly kicks for about three seconds and then she's like, Meh, what are you going to do? Yeah, right? when, when, once the turkey's gotcha. <laughs> also, when he, he stalks through the woods to get to this uh, crack house or whatever, it's for a while. Yes. It's for like yes. a good 10 minutes. Like, <laughs> if we cut straight to the place he's going, was the audience going to check out of this plot? <laughs> like, turkey had a giants can't just teleport. This is stupid. This is stupid. I'm. <laughs> I'm giving up on this movie. Really? You know, what if what if they had a really good looking turkey head originally, but then they cast the guy with the gigantic fucking head and they're like, God damn it. Here it is, guys. Jim Henson's own work. He called this the oh, God, what happened to the original Herschel? I I, I headbutted him and his body is gone. He turned (laughs) into red powder. And I want to point out that once again in this scene where they kidnap the chick, the camera gets too dark to really see what's going on. I had to go to Eli's notes once more. So, (laughs) and and meanwhile, back at the weed house, uh, Herschel has apparently scared Burt Reynolds off. So they need to find a new supplier. Anne is feeling guilty for turning Herschel into a turkey. And one guy has these sideburns that are so, they're like the, they're like Saturn's rings, but for his face. Yes. So I'm sure there were words <laughs> being said in this scene, but I don't know what they are. Yeah. And basically this conversation is like, they're like, so you want us to kill your turkey boyfriend? We're worried about his mental health. And she's like, I still love him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, there's a lot of, like, and again, they're so nonplussed here. They're going, like, you know, Herschel just isn't the same since he turned into a turkey, y'all. Yeah, he has a giant turkey head, just to remind everybody. That's what's happening here. And meanwhile, the turkey is still on the prowl. So some girl gets out of her car all stoned, and, and, and then she gets grabbed by the turkey while she's masturbating against a tree. She's so uh, high. <laughs> Oh, is that what okay. it is? Yeah. Also, <laughs> then she leaned up against a tree and started masturbating because yeah. that's certainly what it looked like. Uh, I mean, we've all been there. No judgment. <laughs> no harm. No foul. Music note here. We paid for this music and we're going to use it, damn it. <laughs> over and over and over again. Yeah. And I love that. Yeah, it's, it's all the stone people so he can get high off of their blood. So the message of this film, the moral, if oh, you will. Oh, that makes it. Oh, my God. You just wrapped the plot for me. Oh don't my God. do the drugs has or you'll get murder raped by a turkey. Before. Yeah, right. It's the endorphins that he's uh, after. Yeah. Just said totally before. makes this. Said this movie ties together. And Noah did it. Good Didn't job. Didn't even paint. Oh, my God. You just said Noah did it. I explained it. <laughs> <laughs> So now Turkey Head has hung one of the chicks that he kidnapped upside down from a from a ladder and he's catching the blood in his hands like a fucking armature like he's like it's dripping down. It's like from a stream and he can barely get you put out a metal bowl. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's like and he slits. One of the person's throats, and they, th- this is the famous scene from this movie. 
there is this special effects scream, <laughs> the exact same scream, yeah. 12 times <laughs> in a row. <laughs> And honestly, like you could have put the Wilhelm scream in here 12 times in a row and it would not seem less appropriate. (laughs) Could have been Sam Kinison. It would have been the same thing. (laughs) Yeah. So she she screams for about five minutes while like biting her hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh But they hired, they clearly hired a different actress, like a professional screamer to do the ADR for this part. (laughs) So the the actress on screen is clearly laughing at how bad the scream track sounds because they're playing it for her, I guess. She's got her hand, she's biting her hand to not laugh at how bad it is. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And of course, the turkey, meanwhile, is drinking the blood of the chick that he's just slid. And and he has a beak. (laughs) So (laughs) So he's just (laughs) patting it onto and around the paper mache head. Like he's just, just he's moisturizing his blood. Oh, it's so amazing. Um, meanwhile, back at the pot house, sexy sister is still upset. Um, and I guess, I, I, I don't know, I guess this is where she uh, uh, eventually consents to them killing her boyfriend if they can't unturkey him first. I, I don't. Um, and, anyway, so now we've got to get another stone girl out of a car because apparently this town is just loaded with them. Right. And, and, and this is a scene is a guy and a girl like army crawling into what is their own vehicle to do heroin in it. <laughs> yeah. Like they're, they're from their like, house. Yeah, they're like boink, boink, boink. <laughs> just to do heroin in their own car with nobody around that they know of. <laughs> right. And again, we watched this for quite some time before finally Turkey Herschel kidnaps her too and then also slits her throat upside down so that we can hear that exact same scream a couple more times. And again, nothing will ever be better than watching this man in a turkey mask pretend to drink blood. Just want to say. Uh, and there's this amazing moment because shots in this movie last too long. He he drinks the blood and then you can tell the actor was like, is it over? We're good? <laughs> Cut? Because you just see him sort of hanging out, you know, like you do. <laughs> And also, I want to point out, like, again, just to give you an idea of how bad this uh, this movie is, at at least two points in this movie, I heard the director giving notes to the actors, right? <laughs> like, at one point, you can hear action, and at another point, you can hear the director say, get up slowly. Turkier, turkier, <laughs> you're a turkey head. <laughs> oh, shit. And now we get, okay, so apparently this is where we lost a lot of the action from the YouTube version that we watched because there's supposed to be some other crazy turkey killing people shit that is not here. So if you're a big blood freak fan or whatever, sorry about the little skipping around we're going to do here. But this is where the old guy comes out and Herschel (laughs) pushes his face to death. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> what the hell was going on there? And and Cal from Modern Family comes out to mourn him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I had a bit, I her him a large Italian woman dressed like Shemp shows up <laughs> and then jumps over a fence impossibly well <laughs> yes! to go after Herschel like like Steve Austin. This enormous large Italian woman. It, it was, was the best parkour we have ever seen in one of the movies we've reviewed. Yeah, no, watching that fat dude leap over the fence was worth the price of admission. Um, and then of course they get into a fight. The fat guy and and, <laughs> and Turkey Herschel get into a fight. Um, and then he starts to scream, and it's even worse than the lady scream. We're just like, oh god, couldn't you have just put that other Scream back in again? It, it sounds like Noah imitating a baby screaming at a parent that's not paying attention on a plane. It's like, ah, ah, you hear that? You fucking hear that? Huh? We're up in the sky for nine hours. Ah, ah. Oh, sorry, I can't control myself. Ah, ah. I'm sorry, I gotta go to Dallas to visit my shitty family. Ah, ah. <laughs> yeah. Like five minutes of baby crying. Yeah, it really, yeah. Here. Yeah. I'm guessing the fat Italian lady left her baby just out of frame. Maybe? Oh, I don't know. See. Which is like, yeah, like you said, you know, inconsiderate. When you're trying to kill a turkey headed vampire with an overhead chop, you get a babysitter. <laughs> you get a babysitter. <laughs> it's in all the books. And if Read you're wondering, the hey, 
What about all the things in this movie that don't matter the fuck at all? Like whether those scientists left the way they said they were going to and what the Christian sister is up to. We're going to find out. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is the most amazing scene in the in this movie, just from a simple filmmaking perspective, is that we actually cut back to the remember earlier when those scientists were talking about leaving the scene ended before they actually left. So we are going to revisit that scene so that they can go, well, let's leave. And then they actually leave. Now, That's the it. movie has gone on now, like into the night, right? Like this is supposed to be hours later in the time frame of this film. So apparently they stood there and pondered it for about nine hours. <laughs> it was like they just found that shot later and like, oh, fuck, guys, we need to tack this one in somewhere. Where are you at right now? And here's what's amazing. From there, we cut to... The revelation of this movie, which is the entire turning into a turkey section of this movie, was a bad drug trip. And the way we as the audience learn this is through the sister having a one-sided conversation on her <laughs> side of the phone about going to pick him up. Wait, yeah. Wait, hold on. You're saying – I thought – I thought he turned back into a not turkey head to a human. No, now, you're saying was that was all, all a, a, a dr drug trip. A, yeah, yeah, really? it was. It was all a dream. So this movie was way too complex for me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so and then she calls the sister and she's like, "Have you been giving him joints laced with addiction powder and make him think he's turned into a giant murdery turkey head?" And she's like, "Yeah, sorry." And she's sorry. like, she's like, feels so bad about it. She's like, I can't go see him. Like, can you talk to him about me? You know, about stuff and and things. <laughs> I have no idea how long these characters are supposed to have been in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, now we cut to the scientist carrying Herschel out to the car. And again, he's not a turkey anymore. He doesn't have the turkey head. This movie has not told you that, right? Like, Eli knows this because he read the synopsis. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the movie doesn't really <laughs> reveal this to you in any way. It's I, I was writing in my notes, like, so the whole blood drinking turkey thing was a hallucination? And yes, apparently, and I, I, again, I had that confirmed later by other websites. Oh, okay. I thought maybe they fed him like a no pesticide organic turkey and he went back <laughs> and he cured. I don't know. Whatever. The scene that got cut was where a Reiki grandmaster comes and waves her hands over him and clears his chakras. <laughs> yeah, he missed it. That's in the oh, I thought that <laughs> happened in the dark. Yeah, exactly. So you could tell me that scene was there and I would have been like, oh, okay, that's what was going on in seven and a half minutes of this movie. But yeah, and so like uh, Angel tells her uh, tells him that uh, Anne's sorry for making him a uh, a, a drug addicted turkey head murderer hallucinator, uh, and then she lectures him about uh, asking God to have more faith, and he does. <laughs> right. He has like a yep. come to God moment where he's like he's like I can't ask God for help. I am but, but I'm a God, my God, and she's like go on <laughs> do it, and he's like God, please come to my birthday party, and she's like great, there we go. Christian movie. There you go, Eli and Heath and Noah. Yeah, Happy bingo. birthday. And I also, I love, by the way, that when he does this, he like, he puts his hands up to pray and he's clearly covering up her head. Like his, yes. his hands are between the camera and her head. So she's trying to look around him to get on camera for the entire prayer scene. And it is amazing. It's incredible. I, this actress is pissed. She's like, okay, maybe pray at chest level so that <laughs> everyone gets to be in the movie Herschel. <laughs> And now we have to go back to the chain smoking perv for the moral of this story. And he says, I shit you not. This story has been partly based on fact, partly on probability. What? And partly on killer turkey mutants, you stupid fuck. He goes, what? He also says, those who use the human body as a mixing bowl for chemicals. The no illusion story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he also says that scientists agree that the only law of the universe is change. And then he starts going in – again, rem remember the plot here. Like, ergo, every time you take a drug, you might get a giant turkey head. You never know. You Enzyme. can't disprove. Catalyst. Remember I said that before? <laughs> Substrate. And what? then he has a coughing <laughs> fit. <laughs> yep. As he's trying to get his last couple lines out. And it's like, addiction is dangerous. 
literal smoker's <laughs> cough. <laughs> Sorry. I was just saying that addiction's dangerous. Literally, this guy has like a six minute coughing fit <laughs> on does. camera and they kept the fucking take. Yes. Was it? Do you think it was supposed to be like, was he winking at no, us or no? It's not on tell. purpose. It is a hundred percent them just being like, well, we're all out of film. So <laughs> this is what we've got. I did, so you're going to be hacking up a lung on camera. Oh, that was, and I honestly, I have never laughed harder watching one of these movies than I did watching that guy just hack and hack after he starts talking to us about how dangerous addiction is. I mean, and this guy threw out, sounds like he should have been worried about his precious bodily fluids or whatever. But then we get to this last final moment of him where he's just clearly dying of cancer before our very eyes. And I loved it so much. I want wanted the movie to end right there, but since they have one more scene with the uh, sexy sister on the beach in her bikini, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Right. He needs to quit cold turkey is all I'm saying. <laughs> Jesus turkey. Christ. We have the sister everybody. standing on the beach. She's very attractive, by the way. Very attractive girl. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, but she <laughs> is sitting there, and he comes up like it's the end of a love story. Did yep. anyone else get that this movie was a love story between the sister <laughs> he hates and him? <laughs> is, is he supposed to end up with the angel? The you would have five hundred one that no. that certainly seemed to be where they were going. But yeah, now he looks like prison hardened Mexican Johnny Cash, and she's happy to see him. So they run into each other's arms, and I guess that's what this movie was about. <laughs> What the fuck was all of this shit? Anyway, yeah, so that was probably the greatest thing that'll ever happen to me. I don't have <laughs> expectations that greater things will happen. Um, but we've got to presume that from there everybody lives happily ever after. So what's the moral of the story here? It, like, if you had to distill this into one, you know, I, I think we've all learned something here today sequence. What would it be? Um, I'm going to say if you, if you eat KFC and smoke Noah's pot, you become the beast of the apocalypse. <laughs> what I'm saying is Noah is the beast of the apocalypse. <laughs> the a waterbed is a comfortable and affordable <laughs> option for the discerning gentleman. I think that's what we do. <laughs> well, obviously, thumbs just don't point the way they need to to sum up this movie. So rather than adding exponents to zero in an effort to sum it up numerically, I'm simply going to ask you this. In terms of experiences that involve both drugs and turkeys, what's the next worst one on the list after watching Blood Freak? Mm. All right. Well, I think you mean uh, next best, right? Because, again, this was amazing. Um, I guess I'm going to say uh, a bunch of bong hits and a giant plate of leftover stuffing, like surface tension leftover stuffing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. Day. That was a, a bad question. <laughs> Because uh, this is the second best experience, as I said, uh, as Heath said. Uh, so I'm going to go with a, a magically vegan bacon-covered turkey while getting a two-tongue job from Michael C. Hall and Courtney Cox. <laughs> this was amazing. You're a Monica guy. You're a Monica guy? I'm a Phoebe guy. All right. Oh, yeah. You guys are both off by one friend. She has and schizophrenia. <laughs> It doesn't matter. And while that does it for a review of Blood Freak, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to inject you with some anticipation juice for next week. So, Eli, tell us, what could possibly follow this up? Oh, Apocalypse 1, Caught in the Eye of the Storm. This is part one of a four-movie apocalypse series that star and include Gary Busey and Mr. T. This is so exciting. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. All those words were true. And by the way, this movie is written and directed by the exact same people that wrote and directed the Left Behind trilogy. And it's the same oh. story. So basically what we're going to learn in this one is that they did it once with Kirk Cameron just to keep him happy. And then they're like, you guys want to do that once another time now that Kirk's out of here? <laughs> and they, they got, did. They got Busey and Mr. T. <laughs> you think they real <laughs> actors? We need real actors. <laughs> Kirk Cameron was not pulling off these lines. Now, as I understand it, though, the first one is not going to have either Gary Busey or Mr. T, and we'll just have to look oh. forward to them coming what? later in the series. But oh, uh, we've, oh we've got to look forward. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to Gary Busey's acting. <laughs> and Mr. T's. 
<laughs> Let's not leave out Mr. T, sir. So uh, with all that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 67 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free edition of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Neli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. <laughs> The narrator's son went on to become president of the United <laughs> no. States. That's real. The chick that recorded that scream went on to be very unpleasant to have sex with. <laughs> Eli never returned to God Awful Movies. His work here was done. <laughs> See Eli putting the master sword back in its place now. <laughs> I turned back into a fat statue somewhere. <laughs> When we need him, he will awaken again. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.